si l'on retient un événement majeur qui est un major event you need to remember that occurred in the past two years in the oceans it's probably the extreme bleaching suffered in the great barrier reef coral is a reef habitat with the greatest marine biodiversity it's estimated to about 1 million multicell species including 6000 bony fish This outstanding biodiversity provides a great number of goods and services to humankind. More than 200 million people depend directly on reef resources for their daily protein ration. Coral is, of course, one of the most vulnerable species in terms of climate change. It, under high temperatures, bleaching events occur and mortality that can be sometimes immense. So there is great urgency in understanding uh, the past dynamics of coral in order to anticipate its future in a context of global warming. In order to model uh, the response of coral to climate change is to estimate the temperatures necessary to its survival, the climate niche of coral, so to speak, by compiling current data in blue and past data based on uh, sediment core drilling. We have this uh, curve here, and uh, the range favorable to coral is between 23 and 33 degrees Celsius. Beyond that, the survival of coral is uncertain. If we correlate that with the uh, Uh, forecast for temperature change since the end of the century, we can map areas in which coral will uh, thrive and those that will become unfavorable to coral here in red and orange. And of course, the major unfavorable areas are in the west of the Pacific and the north of the Indian Ocean. And the most recent data, the most recent crises, are not always consistent with these models and their forecasts, even with the most pessimistic models. For instance, in 2016, the Great Barrier Reef suffered its third bleaching event in less than 20 years, with almost half of its surface affected by mass mortality in the year 2016. And even in 2017, where there was no El Nino event, coral bleaching occurred too. So the models often do not match reality. The Great Barrier Reef, which is to the east of Australia, it was considered by the forecasts, by the models, to be a refuge. But the event in 2016 and that in 2017 challenged the existence of refuges, both in the Great Barrier Reef and elsewhere. So the models are really not very robust in predicting the short-term destiny of a coral reef because bleaching is created by brutal change more than by long-term change, by which I mean more than two degrees over a period of few days or weeks which is far beyond the possibility of acclimatation or adaptation. And these brutal variations are probably going to occur more and more frequently and more and more severely. El Nino, for instance, which is often associated with mass bleaching, will occur more often, not once every 60 years, but once every 15 years in the near future. And this phenomenon is largely unpredictable and will result in unpredictable bleaching of coral. And in the long term, one will note that the models are not necessarily uninteresting because they do predict the fate of coral. If we look at the fossil data between now and five million years ago, the climate has oscillated very strongly. It was relatively stable between minus five and minus three million years, and then in the Quaternary, uh, there were some major cycles, initially of 40,000 years and then of 100,000 years, with alternating periods uh, of um, ice and interglaciary periods with very high temperatures, often higher by one or two degrees of those that we are experiencing currently. So if we try to retrace the presence of coral uh, through these glaciary and interglaciary periods, you will note on the map that the orange spots of current coral are very optimistic if you compare them to the red dots here, which are the maximum temperatures experienced during the Quaternary. And during the Quaternary, the entire equatorial strip 
was entirely devoid of coral. So it suffered major crises before the presence of humans, or at least the effects of human pollution on global warming. And you look at, if you look at this other map where coral is described as being most vulnerable, it is again the equatorial strip from which it may disappear entirely if uh, the temperature should uh, be one or two degrees higher than currently. So if we look at a longer term trend, you will see here this blue graph, the natural evolution of the climate and its oscillations, and uh, the effects of humans, especially since the 1980s and 90s, where the increase of uh, temperature has become more marked. The danger for coral is both in this overall trend, where the temperature is going to go beyond the temperature niche for coral and in the more pronounced and unpredictable oscillations that are going to create events of brutal warming and therefore uh, major bleaching events. So controlling uh, fossil energies, fossil fuels and controlling deforestation are probably more critical than merely a localized management of coral reefs, which leads us to believe that the future of the Great Barrier Reef is probably more an issue of what happens in the Congo, in the coal mines of China, than on the Great Barrier Reef itself. The solutions to these local problems need to be found in global solutions, such as what was advanced during the Paris Accords.